That's it. Work it. Work it. That's it. Work it. Yeah. 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 Ignore this. Ignore me doing this. And I'm spent. Bridge that's gone south. Uh, oh. Boss? Boss? Yes. Yes, boss. I need you in here right away. What did you do this time? Boss, um, got a situation. I'm gonna run this by you. Supposing you had a motherboard that was, say, missing a North Bridge chip? I mean, I mean, bad things? I don't know, you tell Very me. Very bad. Come on, boss, you've always got something for me. Come on, don't let me down. Actually, wait, yep. Agent Tiny, you are a very fortunate tiny man. What's the solution, boss? P-55. Oh yeah. And with Agent Tiny's tiny mistake, we now have the EVGA P55 motherboard. So the unique thing about this platform is it does not really have a north bridge. And as a matter of fact, it has all the capabilities of what is commonly referred to as the chipset or the north bridge in the CPU. So EVGA will be offering a top to bottom lineup of P55 motherboards there are seven total SKUs, as you can see on your screen there. The board we'll be looking at today is the EVGA P55 FTW model. It has some really, really cool features. For starts, it has a 12 plus two phase power design, and this power design can operate at 1189 kilohertz frequency, which gives it more stable power. And with this power design, this can mean EVGA delivers up to 700% cleaner power than competitors. For memory support, this board offers four DIMMs capable of running DDR3 speeds of 2600 megahertz and beyond. You can also put a four gigabyte memory module in each slot which can give you up to 16 gigabytes of memory. And for overclocking it has a three phase power design. One of the most exciting features of the EVGA P55 motherboard lineup is something called DPHS, which stands for Double Play Heat Sink Support, which means that this board not only supports LGA 1156-based CPU coolers, it also supports socket 775-based CPU coolers. You can see it has two mounting holes, one of them obviously for 1156-based CPU coolers, and the other one for socket 775-based CPU coolers. For PCI Express and PCI slots, EVGA offers a 1X, a 16 or 8X, a 4X, and an 8X. These slots are capable of running in SLI mode, and you can also have a physics card. You'll notice up here that there is a Molex connector. This is not a requ required connector, but it is useful if you are doing any kind of heavy-duty overclocking. And with, as with most EVGA boards, it has a power, it has a reset, and it has a clear CMOS right at the bottom of the board. So one of the really cool features about this motherboard is it has not one, not even two, but it has three BIOSes for triple BIOS support, which means you can have a particular BIOS version here, you can have a different BIOS version here, and another BIOS version, the third one, you can switch between them to do BIOS comparisons or you can have a completely separate profile in each one say a mild overclock, extreme overclock, etc. But the coolest feature about this is the way you switch between them. It has a switch right here at the bottom of the motherboard. So switch it there and power it on, you're running on BIOS 1. Switch it here and power on, you're running on BIOS 2. 
Switch it one more spot to the right and you're empowered on, you're on BIOS 3. So that makes it really easy to switch between the BIOSes for BIOS comparisons, BIOS profiles, etc. Another really cool feature of the EVGA P55 FTW motherboard is the EVGA Control Panel V2 or ECP. And what this is, is an extension of some of the most useful items found on the motherboard. For example, you have power, you have reset, you have increased vCore, increased vCore 2, and you have increased VTT voltage, and you have a Diag LED which also shows CPU temperatures when you're in Windows. Finally, you have PCI Express Disable Jumpers. Which Another really cool feature is something called LICC capacitors, which stand for Low Inducted Ceramic Capacitors. So this is a traditional CPU socket. You can see the oversized standard capacitors. Now on the EVGA P55 line, some of the motherboards use low inductant ceramic capacitors, you can see right in the middle here, which are, well, lower inductance, and they're also higher quality. So there we have it. I'm up and running on the EVGA P55 motherboard. And of course, once I am up and running, the first place I go is the system BIOS. And once I am in the system BIOS, my favorite place to be is the frequency and voltage control. So we're going to head on over there. And you can see that I have a multitude of options. I can increase my CPU multiplier. I can increase the beat clock. I can increase my PCI Express frequency, I can increase my QPI frequency, I can adjust my voltages, etc, etc. Now, one thing to note is that the, the uh, Intel Core i5 and Core i7 CPUs run at a beat clock of 133 MHz, so you would increase this or type in the number that you'd like, and by increasing the beat clock, I'm automatically increasing my CPU frequency and I am increasing my memory frequency. So overclocking is quite that simple most of the time. Sometimes you need to adjust voltages, sometimes you'll need to adjust memory timing, sometimes you'll need to adjust your uh, memory ratio. So for those of you who don't want to mess with that, EVJ made a one option step called Dummy OC. Hit that click enabled, save and exit, and you're automatically overclocked. Now for you guys who want to customize your system, you may want to set that to disabled and do it manually. So you can see that, as we discussed, you have all the frequency settings you need. We have an extreme cooling option. Now this is for you guys who are running below zero degrees Celsius, which means if you're running liquid nitrogen, you're running a phase unit, you're running a TEC, or you're running a crazy water cooling setup with ice in a cooler, whatever. This is for you. This, this helps some CPUs boot, or otherwise known as cold bugs, when, uh, below, when they're below a certain temperature. Next we have EVGA V-Droop control. This is a very popular feature. Um, setting it, by default, it's set to with V-Droop. You set that to without V-Droop, and when your system is under load, you will not see the V-Droop sag as much so you get a little bit more stable voltage. You have two CPU voltage options. You have a boot up CPU vCore and you have eventual CPU vCore. And you can adjust these to crazy insane voltages that you would only want to do if you are on liquid nitrogen or something up to over 2.0 volts. And you have, of course, dim voltages, you have VTT voltages, you have CPU PLL voltages. One of the cool features about the EVGA motherboards is you can adjust the CPU PWM frequency. So by default it's at 477 kilohertz. You can increase this up to 1189 which will give you better power delivery, more stable power, etc. So there you have it, the EVGA P55 motherboard lineup. For more information on this product please visit our website at www.evga.com or be a part of our community at forums.evga.com. If you have a video request or want to send me an email, send me one at videos at evga.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Hey, look. Stunt video cards.